Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the pancreas. So the pancreas is a digestive organ and the digestive system is divided in the, into the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, and into accessory digestive organs. So the GI tract is basically the whole system of tubes that actually contain the food that is passing through the body. And accessory digestive organs are organs that never actually contain food, but that contribute in function to digestion. Um, so the pancreas is an accessory digestive organ, and it has both endocrine and exocrine function. So its exocrine function is in the secretion of pancreatic juice. So the pancreas um, makes this clear colorless li liquid, and it's clear and colorless because it's primarily water. Um, and then there's a small percentage of salt, sodium bicarbonate, and enzymes dissolved into that water. Um, and so that fluid is alkaline, hence the sodium bicarbonate, that's baking soda. Uh, so it is alkaline, so it's secreted into the duodenum uh, to help deactivate uh, the pepsin that is entering into the duodenum and to neutralize some of the stomach acid that is mixed in with the chyme that is going from the stomach into the duodenum. So it helps to neutralize the acidity and bring it to a more neutral or alkaline uh, pH so that as it's passing through the small and large intestine that it's not remaining at that extreme acidity of the stomach. Okay, so it, it's secreted from the pancreas. It goes through the pancreatic duct that's running through the length of the pancreas here. And then it joins up here with the uh, bile duct, the common bile duct and forms the hepatopancreatic duct which is this tiny little part here where they join together and then that enters into the duodenum. Okay, the endocrine portion, um, meaning the hormone producing portion is the pancreatic islets, also called the islets of Langerhans. Um, so it's only one or 2% of the volume of the pancreas is formed by these islets, uh, but they're receiving 10 to 15% of the total blood flow to the pancreas. And that makes sense because those are the cells that are secreting hormones and those hormones need to be taken up into the blood to be circulated in the blood. Um, so the pancreatic islets or the islets of Langerhans are like these little islands. Here, let's go back, oops, too far. If we look at this picture here, these little purple spots, those are the islets. And they're like these little islands of cells that secrete hormones. And they're in an ocean of cells that produce pancreatic juice. So the majority of the pancreas is exocrine with these little endocrine islands kind of mixed throughout. So in those pancreatic islets, we have alpha cells that secrete glucagon, beta cells that secrete insulin, delta cells that secrete somatostatin, which is another name for growth hormone inhibiting hormone, and pancreatic polypeptide cells that secrete pancreatic polypeptide. Um, so I'll talk about each of those four hormones. All right, so glucagon secreted by the alpha cells, um, its job is to increase blood glucose. So when blood glucose is getting low and we haven't eaten yet, so blood glucose is getting low, we need a place to get glucose, if not from absorption or from digestion. Um, so glycogen is the storage form of glucose. We have glycogen stored in the liver and in skeletal muscle so that when our blood glucose is getting low, we can break down that glycogen and release glucose into the bloodstream. So glucagon is the hormone that stimulates the breakdown of glycogen into glucose to increase blood glucose. It also triggers gluconeogenesis. So gluco as in glucose, neo as in new, Genesis as in creation. So gluconeogenesis means creation of new glucose. So that's where we transform other things like amino acids, for example, and we transform those into glucose to increase blood glucose. Um, that's why even if somebody is eating a low carb diet, if they're having a lot of protein, they still might end up with higher blood glucose because a lot of protein means that we have a lot of substrate to transform into glucose to keep blood sugar elevated. Um, glucagon secretion is also stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. So when we go into fight or flight, we will secrete more glucagon. 
Um, and that makes sense because um, if we secrete glucagon, it means that we are breaking down our stored glucose to increase blood sugar so that that blood sugar is available to support whatever the activity it is that we need in our fight or flight situation. So if we have to fight or flee, or if we're exercising or embarrassed or excited or whatever it is that has us in that sympathetic state, uh, we will need more glucose to support whatever that activity is. Insulin has the opposite effect. So it's secreted by the beta cells and its job is to help the cells throughout the body, especially muscle cells, to take up glucose from the blood. Um, so when it does that, when we take glucose from the blood up into the cells, for one, it's nourishing the cell and giving the cells the, the nourishment and energy that they need to do all their cellular jobs. Uh, but it also lowers blood glucose because we're taking the glucose from the blood into the cells. So the amount of glucose in the blood is now lower. Uh, it also triggers uptake of amino acids by cells. Um, and it, it triggers uptake of fatty acids by adipose cells. So insulin, if we have a lot of insulin in circulation, it's going to uh, lead to increasing fat uh, storage because it tells the fat cells to store more fatty acids for later. Uh, it also increases protein synthesis. Um, and it is stimulated by parasympathetic nervous systems or rest and digest. So it makes sense when we're in a rest and digest sort of state, we're absorbing uh, glucose and other nutrients through our digestion. So our blood glucose is increasing. And during that restful state is when we want to grow. We wanna tell um, our cells to build new proteins and, and give energy and fuel to cells to take up for whatever growth and development and whatever jobs they have to do. Um, and to tell the body to store that glucose as glycogen or fat for later. So gluc uh, glucagon and insulin, so they work in opposite of one another. They work together to maintain homeostasis of our blood glucose. Um, so when our blood glucose gets low, we secrete glucagon, blood glucose gets high, we secrete insulin and back and forth to try and keep our blood glucose in our homeostatic range. Um, so insulin, it's like um, it goes around, knocks on the door of all the cells, says, hey, it's time to take up your glucose. And the cells do that. They open the door, they take in their glucose, and now our blood sugar is lower. Okay, somatostatin is another name for growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Um, so its job, well, it has multiple jobs. This is also secreted by the hypothalamus, not only the pancreas, but um, in the context of the pancreas, um, it blocks secretion of both insulin and glucagon. Okay, so it is a regulatory hormone that's working together to help regulate the balance between secretion of insulin and glucagon. Um, it also inhibits secretion of certain um, gastrointestinal hormones like gastrin, secretin, cholecystokinin, and vasoactive intestinal polypeptide. So it inhibits secretion of lots of different digestive hormones. Uh, it has a paracrine relationship with glucagon, meaning that secretion of each influences secretion of the other. Um, somatostatin and glucagon together both affect our secretion of insulin. Um, so this hormone somatostatin is secreted in response to high levels of glucose and amino acids in the blood. So it's sort of, it's like if we have a lot of glucose and amino acids in the blood, it sort of puts a halt or puts a stop um, to a lot of our digestive and absorptive functions. Okay, pancreatic polypeptide inhibits pancreatic exocrine secretion. So it inhibits the secretion of pancreatic juice. Um, it also inhibits gallbladder contractions. So our gallbladder is containing bile. And when it contracts, it uh, secretes that bile into the duodenum for digestion of fat. So it's inhibiting that project process. And it inhibits gut motility. So the movement and, and mechanical churning uh, that's involved with the stomach and small intestine, especially. Uh, it inhibits gastric acid secretion and other secretory functions. So it gets, it, it's again, it's putting a stop to a lot of our um, gastrointestinal movement and function. 
uh, stimulated by eating, exercising, and fasting. Um, but although you know I listed off some of its functions here, its role isn't entirely understood. Not we don't really know its role in metabolism of different nutrients and um, why it's necessarily secreted in each case in which it is secreted. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching.